All right. Um, 703, I'd like to call the uh, January 25th Facility Study Group for a meeting to order. Um, I'd like to introduce three new members. Um, for the first time in a long time, we've had a, a full committee. Um, to my left, uh, Dick Loomis. To my right, Brian Parkett and Peter New. Welcome. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. <laughs> um, first, I, first item on the agenda is election of officers. And I understand that each of the uh, committees every year now will we'll do this in the first meeting of the year. It's been a long time since we've had a, an election here, so I'll um, uh, take uh, nominations for first uh, uh, item one, chairman. And uh, would anybody like to make a nomination for chairman? Nominate Alan Lawson. I'll second that motion. Uh, any other nominations? Any other nomination for votes? Second. All those in favor of, uh, of uh, Alan Rossin for chairman? Okay. All in favor of closing nomination signified by by Aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Uh, all those in favor of uh, Alan Rossin for chair signified by Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Second uh, item is uh, uh, nominations for vice chair. Uh, would anybody like to make nomination for vice chair? Second. Any other? <laughs> Any other? <laughs> You're not pulling that. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anybody else uh, like to make any motion to close nominations? Second. All those in favor of the motion to close nominations? Uh, aye. 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 Any opposed to that? All those in favor of Al Mori for vice chair, signified by aye. 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 Any opposed? Yay. <laughs> 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 next item is public comment. Uh, would anybody like to? address the committee before we move into our agenda. And we'll have another another uh, chance back down down the agenda at mm -hmm. item ten. Um, approval of minutes. The meeting we didn't meet uh, in December. The October twenty sixth meeting you were sent the minutes. Anybody would like anybody here would like to make a motion on the minutes of October twenty sixth? Motion to approve as submitted. Second. <clears throat> Any um, comments on the minutes? Additions, corrections, deletions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the minutes as presented signified by aye. 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 Any opposed? Do we have correspondence? No, sir. No, no correspondence. <clears throat> Old business. Um, I'd like to, uh, if somebody make the motion, I'd like to move item D before item A. Talk about the municipal complex. That's the part of the meeting tonight. If somebody would like to make Second. that motion. Yep. Second. All those in favor of the motion to uh, reverse A and B on the agenda, agenda item 5, signified by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 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 You're the new chair, so you sit right there. So half is going to walk right back out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Municipal complex. Uh, I will tell you that uh, the, the mayor and I uh, spoke to the board of, uh, I should say, the uh, board of finance the other night, and uh, after a heated, heated discussion, we were successful in coming away with uh, the money we think to 
we finish our mission with redesigning the, having LLB redesign the town hall to now include astronaut and a community center. So at this point, um, I know Mary's been in contact with, with both of you about this and the schedule going forward. And, uh, We'd certainly like to turn the floor over to you, or I believe you have something to show us. We do. Uh, thank you very much for having us. Um, it's, it's exciting to be revisiting this once again. <laughs> well, um, this, this, this will probably be the last time. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so, too. Um, yeah, uh, Mary was in, in contact with us um, at our last meeting. Certainly, we, we reviewed uh, some of the things that we've seen in the past. Uh, we're going to do that again uh, very briefly. We know that there's a very aggressive schedule, so we've tried to get a little bit of a jump on it. want to impress upon everybody that decisions need to be made uh, in a timely manner. Um, we certainly think that the schedule is, is, is achievable, but um, we'll, we'll see if, if um, if we need any interim meetings. So. Uh, Ellen, if I may, I just want to kind of brief everybody on the schedule, just so everybody is understanding what Drayton is sure. talking about. Um, for timing of this, we would be looking to do a referendum in, um, you know, in August, early September, which means um, this group needs to complete its task and make recommendation to the Board of Selectmen um, by your end of March meeting, so they receive it in April. So the Board of Selectmen and Board of Finance both have time to digest, make their decisions around it, and then if it, you know, as moving forward, be able to go out and, you know, uh, talk to the townspeople about it. So it is a very aggressive timeline because you are really talking about essentially two months. Um, we'd be looking at doing special meetings in order to be able to accomplish these tasks. So I just wanted to kind of give everybody that idea. So we did take a look back at the last two studies. Um, as Drayton mentioned, um, it is a quick hit for us. So this is the January meeting already, um, February and then March. So we only have technically three times. So typically we'd want to get a little bit further in this first meeting, but we've only had a day or two to prepare. Um, so the next, we're coming away from this meeting, hoping to get some decisions from you on concepts. And then the next meeting we want to present floor plans and um, exterior renderings and elevations. And then if that is approved by you guys, we can go right to cost estimation uh, to present that to you in March. If not, that's when we'll want to pull that into a meeting between February and March. All right, so we've all taken a look at some of this stuff before. Um, so, and we've all been through this process, so uh, just to reiterate what Mallory said, you know, we, we want to do some concepts, then we will develop it into detailed plans and, and, and renderings. Hopefully you like those, but we do need some time to have that detailed cost estimate prepared because we know that's the big issue. Um, so we want to make sure that we even might have time to make adjustments if necessary when, when that's done. So, um, the, uh, the overall uh, addition um, to the plan that we saw the last time was to add about 4,000 square feet for the Historical Society, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 3,000 square feet for the Historical Society, and 4,000 square feet for the Senior Center. <coughs> so just wanted to take a, a, a quick step back to look at diagrams, especially for the people that haven't been part of this process, um, to take a look at and see because we're, we're hoping that we can rely on some of the relationships and adjacencies and good ideas that have been done in the past to help um, move this process along. So um, this was um, a, a while ago. Um, this was the diagram for the two-story option that, that we developed originally. Actually, sort of three stories because eventually we, at, we uh, added a basement to this. So I'm not going to go into, into much detail, but the, uh, the idea is, is that the library um, in, the, in the beige was on the first floor, 
Our meeting room was on the first floor. There was a historical component on the first floor here, and that the town hall would be on the second floor. So that was that proposal. Um, then we took a look at the armory because there was a concern about the senior center and where would the senior center go. So when we looked at the armory, there was a bit of taking the existing space and filling it with program. But we also worked with, with you and with the seniors to develop a certain amount of program. So taking a look at the armory, not counting the recreation department or the veterans affairs, which, you, which in the next phase went back to the, to the municipal building. Uh, the senior center had basically a, a kitchen, a dining program room uh, with a movable wall that could be a bit, uh, with an exercise area, a billiards room and crafting external crafting room, and a reading computer library, and a meeting room and an office for the executive director. So that is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, but that was the basic senior center program that we're assuming is going to be translated into the new building, and we can refine that. But that's um, that color, if you will, that sort of teal color is about 4,116 square feet in this particular plan. And that was the armor. So then the diagram for the last plan that we did, that we're most familiar with because it was the latest, was uh, the one for, again, the libraries in the, in the beige, um, and then the, the town hall um, was in a long uh, and a long bar, and this was a one-story addition um, that um, was pretty uh, straightforward. Um, the uh, town administrative suite down at this end, the meeting room at this end, so it could be used by both the town hall and the library, coming straight into an entry here directly down into a library, or taking it left, and this wing is the town hall, and that was that. Everybody with us so far? Mm -hmm. Before we get into the next step, um, I want you guys to note that on this scheme, we were up to 32,000 square feet. So let's just use that as our baseline right now of 32,000 for the town hall, the library, including the appropriate amount of storage that we have discussed. So one of the things that, um, so, so looking at the basic diagrams, uh, and again, taking it sort of back to just colors, the town hall portion um, is just over 18,000 square feet. The library portion is uh, just under 14,000 square feet. We're adding 4,000 for the senior center, and we're adding 3,000 for the historical society. So once a building gets significantly over 30,000 square feet, particularly on this site, it starts to become more efficient to again take a look at two stories because it just gets too spread out. The floor slab is too big, the roofs are too big, and the economies of scale fall away. Uh, so again, it, it makes sense to start again looking at a two story. Uh, so when we, when we're, when, as we did before, when we're trying to be as efficient as possible and sort of stack the, the right amount of program over each other. We wanted to take a look at you know, how big were these pieces that we're putting together in this puzzle. One of the um, one of the comments that was um, that was relayed to us is that uh, the committee um, and, the, and the library in particular were very pleased with the layout of the library as it was in the last plan. So that's, in this, in this diagram, that's why you see the library configured this way because that was basic, the basic configuration of the way it was the last time. Uh, another sort of in, important program piece was uh, the meeting room because that was a piece of program that was going to be shared by both the library and the town hall. Mm -hmm. So when we're starting to consider this as more than likely two stories, we're trying to decide how, how does it get divided up. Um, so again, the library uh, being open to really everyone in town, toddlers to seniors, um, really probably 
is, is more appropriate on the, on the ground floor. Uh, the meeting room, again, it will be used in the evenings. It will be used for selectmen's meetings, for committee meetings. That's probably, and that probably wants to be on the first floor as well. Um, uh, the town hall, we have looked at it previously on the second floor. So that's sort of, you know, we're all sort of thinking that that was okay then. So let's think about it being okay again. The senior center really should probably be on the main level. That's the whole point is so that seniors can get in and out fairly easily. Um, and the historical society, again, that's a piece of program that is really uh, enhances the entire community. And the whole real program point of the historic society was to have an exhibit, an exhibit space that was um, uh, accessible and uh, somewhat sort of a museum space. Um, we didn't feel that, you know, at least for this exercise, putting the historical society um, up on a second floor at the end of a hall would probably be the best use. So, um, we've got a couple options for you tonight. And again, sort of remembering what some of the other uh, options were, uh, remembering that the library really preferred that particular layout. Uh, we wanted to, to run a couple of uh, ideas, just basic ideas kind of to so we can start putting this together. So, um, the site plan, uh, really, we haven't had a chance to work on, but it hasn't necessarily, it hasn't really changed from the last site. Locating the building on the south side of the lot seemed to be appropriate because there's a school buried uh, up towards the intersection. We wanted to leave that area as a, as a green space. Um, so in this, this option, the first floor is similar in, in form to the last uh, design that you saw. Come into the center, come into the library. The library really doesn't change uh, significantly from the last uh, uh, option. The meeting room is in the same approximate location. These would be support spaces and toilets, etc. Um, there would have to be some vertical circulation to really invite people up onto the second floor, make it obvious that, that business is being conducted upstairs. Um, putting the historical society uh, uh, here and the senior center, community center down at the end here. That gives the senior center uh, the most exterior uh, windows. Um, if there, there could be a, a, a uh, probability actually of, an, of, an, of a secondary entrance directly into the senior center. Um, it's very close to the parking. The historic society um, doesn't necessarily need windows. They have artifacts that they want to pr 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 protect and they want to put things on the wall. So uh, windows to the exterior aren't necessarily as important for historic society in this particular way. And then on the second floor coming upstairs, uh, the town hall uh, will be on the upstairs. So uh, this is the second floor. So uh, on, a, on, on this option one, again, a fairly uh, large first floor uh, with a uh, with the library in the back and a two-story uh, building in the front. The, I wanted to point out in the diagrams also, um, specifically the sections, the library, was planned as one story so that we could utilize the vaulted ceilings um, that we were directed um, to do. And so that's why you're not seeing anything stacked on top of the library. Mm -hmm. um, and also if there's a concern about the window space into the historical society, we do view that main corridor heading towards the community center as a gallery space um, and being able to peek into the historical society from that space. And it, and it does face south, but that corridor would protect it from direct sunlight. So. Mm -hmm. Questions? Yes. Um, I think it, it was Mallory that just said the front of the building, mm -hmm. meaning the um, town hall side. I'm sorry. I was just referring to the front, meaning like the entry. Okay. So there's a corridor here. So um, we kind of want to decorate that corridor with the gallery, like this historical society kind of spilling out into the space if you had display cabinets along that corridor. I, I, I don't, again, 
care what you call the front, but yeah. when you're driving up to the intersection and you're looking at the building, right. to me, in some respects, that's the front. Sure. Because sure. That's what you see when you come into town. <clears throat> and I'm just wondering whether looking at the building, you know, as architects, what's the most pleasing to the eye? Is it better to have the one story library facing the intersection or the two story town hall? I, I think the way that we have it now creates a lot of dimensionality coming from that intersection. So you see the lower building and then the bigger building kind of being the backdrop of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so it st steps up. Um, but also, I'm just using front as the main entrance. We know in this circumstance, every side needs to look like the front because it's yeah. on, you yeah, know. Such a problem, right? Right. The two main streets. Is that? Uh, pretty much to scale as far as how much of the field it's going to take up. Yes. Yeah. But the second floor is just floating there, you know. It's not really. Like that no, I know. I know. But it looks like it's going to take about half the field, come out about half the field. And that's it's a lot of parking. So if you recall, um, this parking lot was taken from our last scheme. But if you recall to the first feasibility study, we had two rows or um, a row of parking along this edge, a row of parking along the back, and then just a single row here. Um, as Dorit mentioned, we haven't really gotten too far into this site um, with this specific building, so we can do that. It's just that with having one main entrance, we wanted to stack your parking <coughs> on that side. And it is just a diagram, so. Um, so you know, we're, so this is this mm -hmm. this is a little bit wide. You know, it would be this would be a sidewalk, and then there would probably be a little bit of landscaping, and then the building. So that whole thing would move over a little bit. Uh, we could take a look at uh, exactly how much parking um, you would like, mm -hmm. um, and so this you know we could we could reduce or expand. I know everybody wants to be right next to the door, but it's not necessary. I don't think it's my personal opinion. Maybe everyone is going to disagree with me that we should preserve as much of the green space as possible mm -hmm. and put the double wide parking over there where it already is and up here. Right. Okay. If you need to and you move the building back and preserve as much green of that area as the possible. The thing I want us to remember is this is this was the parking for the last option and adding historic society and the community center. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're going to need to add. Right, I'm not saying that we are saying instead right. of using up all that green, Pull it down. once you take the green away, it's gone. Right. So I'm just saying instead of using up half of the seven acres with, with the parking and everything, there's already parking over there. People are used to that not being green. Mm -hmm. So you can just bring that out a little sure. more. But all that front of it, push the building back and make that the one parking and the other the double sign. It's just mm -hmm. my opinion. Sure. Um, everyone might disagree with me and just stick a net in there before we do it. The other, the other section that's left open there where the Historical Society building is now between the entrance exit there, there and the next street, that could that could be parking <coughs> and then instead of so Once much parking. <coughs> But now, since we're going to use this as a voting place, we are going to need a lot of parking. Is, is the question, are you removing the historical society completely into the building? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that, that, I know it's just a preliminary, but that parking lot that's up at the top, is that um, to scale with what's there in that spot now, or is that pushed back, creating more green space in that direction? That was pushed back, yeah. So we added the green space towards the top to yeah. refurb that. So, right. It could be a situation where you move the double parking over there, but you're just getting the space the this way and not this way. Yeah. Right. It's the same amount of green. Just the right, that's what, that's what I was getting. Right. I, I think what we want to look at also, I know you guys are always wanting to think about the future, um, Whichever direction we do go with parking, we'll want to make sure we have enough of a buffer zone so that you have space to add on. Um, like in this scheme, it makes the most sense to add 
um, making the bars longer. So like the community center, adding space above there or down in the meeting room. So we don't want to get the width of the site too tight, but we, will, we can definitely add right. parking mm -hmm. along that edge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now that it's a two-story building, what kind of foundation are you going to have? Slab on grade. It's going to be a slab again. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because otherwise it would be back up to the first scheme of 60,000 square feet. Right. Isn't that the problem we have here? The lack of the expanse. But we added more storage to this one. We added more space for storage. Right for both the town hall and the library. Um, and that's been kept in this design. Okay, where, that, where is that? Well, we, we, it hasn't, we haven't worked out the details of this. This is just a diagram. Okay. Right. We want to make sure that you get the diagram right when we move the development the floor plan. But mm -hmm. Mary is correct that 2,000 square feet that we added to the last uh, one-story scheme is, is in, the, uh, in the diagram. Okay. Mm -hmm. If we're now, putting this a slab is going to take the, the two stories? Of course. Well, there'll be a foundation <clears throat> right. that would go down a minimum of four feet. This is frost frost frost. Frost. Okay. Spray footing is foundation slab. Any consideration been given to going deeper and make a, make a basement? Not in this one. Not in this one? Okay. I caution you just because we have been down that road before. That's one of the problems or one of the issues that we had originally because the original building was two stores and then we talked about adding a basement and then everybody said well if you're going to add a basement why not make it over the whole building and then it added another 20,000 square feet to the whole plan which made it too expensive so but I can also recall store. that um, that was that was a, a wish list that we were working on if you remember Everybody wanted everything. And, if and, I had, then, and then it got reduced. Um, as far as the basement is concerned, from the town's perspective, from document management on the town's perspective, probably the historical society would share the same viewpoint. Um, I know the library, Priscilla and I have had this conversation a lot. Basements in New England are not a great place for storage of our documents. It may I, be I fine initially. But it's also not a good, great space for people to work in either. Exactly, which is why we're supporting a slab on grade rather than developing a basement in this. Okay. I would rather see a slab on grade and have all of the space usable than have space that we're eventually not going to be able to use and nobody's going to be able to be down there and nobody's going to be able to store documents down there. And we're back into the same situation that we run into right now. I'd rather see everything above grade. Yeah, even in the first scheme, when we had uh, the two stories and added the basement, we didn't have enough room to use it strictly as storage. We had had the Asquanach in the basement and we were cutting away on one side. So in, in, in effect, it was a three-story building. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I also remember, Alan, that when we went to see the Wellington Library, everybody was marveled at the basement. Yeah, but that that's the piece of land is not flat like that. Yeah, that's just, that's piece of land is <coughs> like on a hillside, so okay. the All basement right. is a walkout basement. You right. don't have that option. <clears throat> so, one of the comments that came from somewhere, I'm not quite sure where, but it was the uh, but it was suggested that we go take a look at the town center. Yeah. Uh, library and communities. Uh, the mayor had those. So, um, a, a member of our staff actually lives close by. She actually lives in Papa. And she went uh, She went by uh, Thompson and took a few uh, <coughs> photos of the inside, but took a, a photo of the, of the basic floor plan, the key plan. <coughs> um, so, just you, you may know it better than, than we do, but, but this is really the library. You come in here, the library program room is here, the digital <coughs> library and available uh, after hours off the lobby. And then there's the corner, <coughs> um, and it has uh, a series of community rooms that are separated by movable walls so that that can be opened up for a larger space. And then there's a, um, there's a, a kitchen and storage um, 
area between these two meeting lines. So we wanted to just uh, acknowledge that and, and take that into account, particularly in what <coughs> might be another option, option two. In option two, the, the town hall is still on the, on the second floor. What we've done is we've taken the, the library and, and turned it. So it's still the same basic layout, except we've just turned it so that it's got a, a sort of a smaller connection to the, to the, the main uh, two-story bar. Coming in uh, in the same location so you can get uh, directly into the library. But coming in here, in this one, the historical society is on your right. And the meeting room is on your left, so that that meeting room can now be uh, connected to the library, the town hall, and the community center. Again, meeting rooms don't necessarily have to have lots of windows. You're showing a lot of presentations in there. Um, and then there's a, a sort of a similar, could be a similar corridor here to get to the community center, but again, there can be a second uh, uh, secondary entry directly into the community center. Um, so we, it, it's, it's a similar one, except we flipped the meeting room and the historical society. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. one, Sorry. The other benefit of this one is dealing with that um, interim space between the two buildings right here. Um, you get more wall area for that is lit by windows for the library as opposed mm -hmm. to kind of just being squished between the two buildings, but also um, it's easier to put now a hipped uh, or a pitched roof that kind of slopes to either side. Um, so we'll have to work through this, but this is, is one of those ideas and, and we're working through um, patterns to kind of tie the two buildings together. I know um, you guys aren't the biggest fans of um, outdoor space or courtyards um, because of some issues. So we do have these spaces in here, but we do think that you could um, put some nice landscaping between the two buildings to kind of create a buffer so you're not like looking out onto each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, these are just two diagrams. If you like, you know, uh, if, if, for example, you really like the way the library attaches in this one, then, you know, these two things can be flipped back and forth. Or you like this layout that you like, you know, the way the library looks in this one, then, you know, those two things, we'd like to hear that feedback from you. So those are, I mean, again, we, we've all been doing this for a while, so I, I hope that you have in your head um, that some of the ways that these, these, these spaces can be worked out, um, and we're confident that, that that can happen, but we wanted to get your confirmation and any ideas that you might have, particularly about these, these two options, right? I didn't hear anything about it. Sure. Sure. Pardon? I didn't hear anything about an elevator. There will, of course, be an okay. elevator. Right. The, the entire building will be accessible. Okay. There'll, there'll have to be an elevator, two means of egress from both levels. Mr. Chairman, um, now, <clears throat> having looked at both plans and, and, and getting involved in this in, in the short term, you know, this particular makes the most sense because it, it gives us more opportunity for a, a, a bigger area for the community to work with, it. you know, the community room center itself, it, you know, you can shut off different parts so you can use different uh, organizations can use it at night for different things, we can use it for voting, we can, so there's a lot of options to that and being tied into the library on that side. <laughs> this is just my personal opinion, I think this make, this particular plan makes the most sense that would address most of the issues and would be more accessible to the community as a whole. Okay. I remember at one time when we had the two-story, um, two boxes, one sort of offset sure. over the other? That's what we did right. here. Yeah. I didn't see it. Well, <laughs> well the, 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 the town hall, the, the, the bar, the floor plan of the town hall is, is a little bit larger than this. So the dotted line here represents the the uh, outline of the town hall of the second floor of Right. I mean, just two blocks without without the 
take this and put it on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this is good. It actually works better in this layout um, because this is on the south side. So it'll be shading a lot of the light that's going to be directly entering the community center and install society in the entry. So it works out well here. I'm saying it, one without the library shape that way, that still was you know, accommodating for the library. There was a plan where the library was really right. shaped like that. Just because mm -hmm. I know when George was right. on the, the committee, it would, you know, he always said about how the more, you know, angles you made, the more expensive the thing was. Can I talk yes. to that? Yeah. Um, Linda, we really liked this layout because <coughs> the surf desk can be in the middle and the children on one wing, the adults on another wing, and so you can really see the whole scope of the library. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you're not, you're not saying you like this particular plan. The other one that has the more windows. Oh, yeah. The only thing that I was going to ask you, Priscilla, is on this one, the one that they're showing right now. There's right. more of a longer bar. Were you looking more for that kind of extra wing that flip back to the other one? Nope. <laughs> Wrong way. The other way. No. Nope. That <laughs> one, which gives you kind of three wings off. Well, that. Coming out the right, that would probably, I would think, the program of that would be transferred Flipped. to okay. the left. Okay. So yeah. I right. think that Just the flip. second version would probably yeah, look better the from yep. the street. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I love the <coughs> possibility of higher ceilings for the library yeah. and the light all the way across. Okay. Yeah. And, the, the, and the intention here is that. <coughs> In its most basic form, the library sort of has three wings and can be controlled from the center. Yeah. Whether it's this plan or this plan, yeah, same again, thing. three same wings thing. controlled from the center. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we recognize the, the benefits of the layout, so we would work it out both ways. And a quick question, are we comfortable with the infrastructure? Are we sure that the uh, water lines are sufficient, the sewer lines are sufficient, Yankee gas can provide enough gas to heat it, and uh, have we talked to uh, DOT as far as Citing to the uh, because we're using 44 and uh, 171. Right. We haven't talked to the Department of Transportation as of yet. The um, this curb cut is, is approximately in the same location as where it is now on Providence Street. Um, this curb cut we uh, have worked in conjunction with the committee and, and, and the representatives of the neighborhood to make sure that it's uh, directly across. So it forms a little bit of an intersection here as opposed to anything else. But until we have a final plan, um, we, we have a, a approach with the Department of Transportation. Now, we're, we're confident that all the utilities can be accorded for the project. Early on, we had a presentation from J&D about the site. And we talked about that entrance on, on Providence Street. That would be only an entrance, not an exit. The, the other one on School Street would be both an entrance and an exit. And I, I suspect there's probably going to have to be something to put there. I mean, for sure that road is in, which is going to have to take it out, <laughs> take it out at the bottom of Walnut Street for whoever lives there, because that oh, is, line of sight. is a first <laughs> section of what to do. <coughs> right, yes. Well, that's right. all in a yeah. good time. Right. Right. Sarah, you looked at so, me. Do you live there? <laughs> Do you live there? <laughs> you look at me like as if you know who lives there. Well, what's the road at Benjamin got to do with the parking? No, it's oh, not. Well, well, the intersection. The site right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's a problem just in normal traffic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be worse with this extra traffic. It's going to be worse with the extra traffic. And then, yeah. So, it's a problem from Walmart. So, so, my understanding is yeah. the other, if you can get the most direction you can tonight from yeah. us and I'm very happy to say the mayor is here and three of the oh, selectmen, <coughs> representatives from the, uh, yeah. Yeah. from Aspinock, from <laughs> the Commission on Aging, and from the library. So um, I would think we'd want to open it up and get everybody's opinion and give you as much input as, as possible. No, I know it, but they're here as individuals. Yeah. But it's not a majority either. It is. It's four. Yeah. You have four here to the board of selectmen. So you have to be cautious. You're the committee. 
Um, well, as individuals, yeah. I'll leave for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just. No, it's not speak and leave. <laughs> we, do, we do have a, a couple of uh, programming um, confirmations that we want to do uh, as well. So if we yep. could just show you that That's now fine. real quick. Yes. Um, we wanted to just make sure that we're working with the right we're making the right assumptions about the, you know, the 3,000 or 4,000 square feet. Now, this is again, this is these are just bubbles and just diagrams. But um, what, based upon what we had worked out before for the historical society, we've got um, and it's hard for me to even see. We got we got 1,500 square feet of gallery. We've got about 780 <laughs> square foot of research lab. We've got two offices. One. Uh, for the uh, director and mm -hmm. one for the assistant. And then we've got a 500 square foot storage space. Mm -hmm. So again, give or take, mm -hmm. are those the program pieces that would satisfy the historical society? More mm -hmm. gallery than storage and research mm -hmm. um, The other, um, uh, the other uh, big chunk, the community center, again, sort of based upon what we had worked out before. Um, we've got uh, a large community room at 750, a smaller one at 600, an executive director's office, um, a community living room space, a billiard room, a small meeting room, arts and crafts, a kitchen area, uh, restrooms, and a um, nurse health exam room. So again, we just want to make sure that we're not missing a major component of the program that may have. Okay. Um, I would just say on the community center piece, um, the larger community room, smaller community room, um, if that could be made really one space with like a sure, dividing right. wall right. as opposed to having it as individual spaces. Yeah. Same with most of that, like really making it where it could be expanded or shrunk as needed so we can use it for alternative meeting spaces as well throughout the process. And, you know, we may not necessarily need individual office space within there. Okay. I would like to push you to explain further um, only because when you um, think about movable walls, they're very nice and they're great, they're amazing, but they are expensive. Okay. So we want to really nail down which spaces would be this larger space. Because in our minds, if these two community rooms, yes, we agree they should be um, have a movable partition to become one space, but if this is also backed up to the main meeting space, do you, what additional spaces are you hoping to kind of lump into that? So I think we want to be able to have the ability to have larger evening meeting spaces that, because we, we all, we tend to have more than one commission meeting happening in, an, in a given night right. that may need um, larger space. Mm -hmm. So the meeting room may be taken up by the board of selectmen or the board of finance while the one of the other uh, meeting spaces may be taking up uh, zoning board of appeals or this group or you know something along those lines that is also bringing a larger crowd. So to be able to have, even if it's that, those two, those two larger boxes have that as a partitioned wall there where that could be opened up if we needed to have a significantly larger overflow and as well as being able to open that up for say that's where we're going to have our, our voting space mm -hmm. so they can actually put out and spread out the appropriate um you know voting booths right. so there's enough space and there's enough flow in that um you know the the, the outer side pieces um you know we can figure out what we really want to do for program programming in there. They may not necessarily have set programming space, yeah. but to be able to have, you know, just flexibility within those rooms. Okay. Because I want to just caution, like with the combined three rooms, you'll have 3,000 square feet of space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just want to get it. <laughs> I get it. It's huge. But it's not necessarily that they're all going to be used right. in this by the same meeting. Right. You know, I mean, I, I don't... The possibility of us having to use a 3,000 square foot mm -hmm. space for one meeting mm -hmm. is not probable 
right. for the most part, but we may yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. two larger meetings that are happening at the same time that, let's face it, we've, cr we've crammed in this room enough, you know? Right. Um, it would be good to be able to have um, room. Well, as we, as, we, as we develop it, and I don't know that we need to get into it tonight, but you know, we, we could look at these areas as like an arts and crafts area a billiard space and and all of that is part of, part of a larger community living room. So if, if you know if the, the people playing billiards aren't loud and raucous and aren't disturbing people in the living room area then it could just be a part of a much larger space. <clears throat> I, I think and, and I'm being very blunt here uh, billiard rooms and that uh, doesn't fit to me, fit the needs of the whole community. Uh, these are going to be used. I like the Thompson setup. It takes the needs of everything. It takes the needs of the seniors. They have three different rooms they can work in. Okay, we can open it up. Billards, rooms, and these other offices for seniors. There's plenty of area that we can uh, set aside from for office space. Okay. We have to look towards the future where there's multiple uses of these rooms. And I think Thompson had the best idea. When you, you say, oh, them folding things are expensive. They might be expensive, but they open up that whole area for big gatherings of people that we have. This community's grown. We're gonna need space. We're gonna need to be able to have voting in, in this area. There's, the, the seniors will have three different rooms they can work in, plus a kitchen. The way it's looked out there, it just butchered it. And I'm being very blunt with it. I've been to Thompson, <clears throat> I saw the senior citizens, how many come, come there. I've been there a number of times because I was the first selectman. <clears throat> and I've been there and seen the community, the seniors working there, how many <clears throat> seniors there. I've never seen more than 100 seniors in the senior center during lunch. Okay, this town has a bigger community of seniors than any of the 16 town areas. I recognize that fact. That's why I want to open that area up so they will have the room for expansion. Okay, you lock it up, you start ch chopping it up like that. They're not going to have the space to do the different things that the town wants to do overall. You know, you can have the seniors in two or three rooms. And I told the seniors point blank. 95% of the time during the day, they're going to be there. At 9 o'clock at night, they're in bed. Uh, and I'm serious. I talk to them. You know, most of the time, they, they're not at the night facility. You know what I'm saying? It's used for, uh, you know, meetings and, 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 and that point. And, I, and I'm being perfectly blunt. Right. No, I appreciate it because we were only going off of the last theme, and this right. was the program. What I want to ask... Um, and I'm not sure if you guys answer this or if the committee. I'll let the committee decide. The Council on Aging answers it. Does it seem like a better route to split the 4,000 square feet into restrooms? You need restrooms down at this end, yep. so that, that's not bad. Right. A kitchen and then three large rooms. <coughs> Is that it? it would, because really, honestly, it's looked at not just a senior center, right. but, a rec but a whole community mm -hmm. center. Okay. So it's going to be the seniors are going to use it, but also there's the possibility that maybe there's going to be you know, fitness classes that are offered at night right. by, the rec, by the rec department as well. And we want to be able to have that. So you do need to have, you know, bathroom facilities located very close to close to there. Right. Um, a kitchen would be good to have there. So if they do decide to do some level of meals um, during the day, but, you know, we really want it to be as flexible as possible. So that way we're meeting as many needs as possible <coughs> with that space. Sure. Okay. And then the seniors want to throw a pool table in there. <coughs> they need a separate, separately. No. It's an area. Yeah. It's an area. Right. right. We can exactly. make areas <coughs> as we need it. That's on the lawn. 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 That's on yeah. And the other idea around, like, I know, like, uh, I think it was for the library, there was some cracked space 
Right. The, the children's. The children's. Yeah, and then there is a computer lab and right. there is a conference room. Right. So we're, you know, so hopefully, you know, like if they wanted to do a, a, a computer program, we wouldn't have to replicate that space in the community center. Right. We would have it coordinated through the library as well as, you know, the children's area, that, you know, if it's accessible for, you know, doing some level of craft, they could coordinate that and that way we're not trying to replicate every single space in all the different functions. We can kind of try and, we can schedule ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to, getting a little bit into the weeds, but I, would there be an office for the council and the council on aging? No, so the council on aging is, is just a commission. Okay. So um, the staff level that would probably do most of the coordination with everyone and work with the Commission on Aging would be through the Recreation Department. So that's already incorporated in the town hall. If we got to a point that we needed to add, you know, part-time staff or something, you know, we would have to look at, but we have spaces put in the town hall that we could work with that. So I don't know that we need to have a separate designated office in the community center for that type of a position. And another uh, detail question that will have to come up at some point is the level of kitchen facilities. Sure. In, in, the, in the armory, it was a <coughs> scaled down kitchen. Yep. Um, and I think that's probably about where we're going to end up landing. Okay. Right? Kitchen. Yeah. Something, yeah, I, well, not quite kitchen app, but something smaller scale, I mean, not. Uh, yeah. 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 Something functional. Fun yeah. Something functional. Yeah, not commercial size. Right, but you're probably going to need, you know, a refrigerator and a freezer, right. you know. Sure. Yeah. Nothing. Um, but when, <coughs> if you're going to be preparing uh, detailed meals there, then it's a commercial range hood. It's a walk-in freezer. Right. No, it's, we're yeah. not going there. Yes. Small freezer, refrigerator. <coughs> right. And Most standard stove, standard yeah. size stove. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 stove. <laughs> uh, are you tending to do any kind of cooking? If you're going to do any kind of cooking, then it requires a commercial hood exhaust yep. system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bought a microwave. Did you say microwave would that be okay? It's an expense, but it can still be a small. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. Exactly. It's not, but it has to be. Right. 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 I'm hearing yeah. preparing they meals mean, and yeah. ultimately cooking is going to happen. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, we're not talking a large. Originally, for the young, we were talking a large kitchen, a yeah. large commercial kitchen. And we don't need that. Very small scale. Okay. We still have to have the necessary requirements right. around all of those we're things like, which we're planning on. It's more, just yeah. smaller yeah. scale, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. They wouldn't let us put around that. No. <laughs> now we were talking about a kitchen in the auditorium. So would this take the place of the auditorium kitchen? Or are we talking about a kitchenette? Off the auditorium? No. No. The, meeting, no. the big meeting room. Big meeting. Oh, the big meeting. replacement for this room. Yeah. We, we were. We were. It was, it was just a sink. It was a, just a, just a sink. A, a sink with a, a counter so that you could have a coffee okay. urn and lay out yeah. some cookies. Yeah. 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 Okay. Small. Very small. Not a kitchen. A sink. A sink with a countertop. A curry. An outlet. So what you. Yeah. It's probably very similar to what the uh, Board of Education's conference room has, which is a sink right. and a countertop right. with a couple of cabinets okay. underneath. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, next one. Uh, jumping back to the Historic Society, I didn't hear, is that, is that basically what you're looking for? If I, no? okay. if I could interject as far as the gallery size for the Historical Society is big, way too big. If we could bring the storage space right straight across there. How high are the ceilings in this? Is this a regular uh, seven and a half or eight foot ceiling or is it going to be higher? 
Because when it comes to storage, we're I'd rather look at the cubic footage than the square footage, because uh, we can pile it higher and deeper. Uh, <laughs> you know, so I mean, we're looking at at the square footage there. And uh, we need more, I think we need to, to increase the storage space and, and shut down the gallery or make the gallery space a little bit smaller. If they're equal a thousand and a thousand, is that better? That would be better, but I could, yeah. Or do you want to? Well, yeah, no, a thousand and a thousand <laughs> would be good. Yeah, that's what I was looking. If you came that, okay. that 500 square foot storage space, if you brought that straight down okay. and reduce the Is it the lab too big? Is that appropriate? No, because the research lab, um, actually we use a lot of that for storage too, where people would have <laughs> access to the things that are used all the time, like the newspapers and archives and things like that. The storage space is stuff that isn't on display okay. at any given particular time unless we're having a particular program. Okay. So that confirms that. Um, can we just back up? Um, there's two more things we want to confirm with you guys to keep us on track. Um, the concepts, I don't know if you have to vote on that. Option one or two, or if you're going to scratch both of them, well, I, I, I think I think we need to have more of a general discussion sure. amongst the committee and mm -hmm. the, the other people that are going to occupy the building, and then we can give you that. So, when would that discussion may happen? Uh, I think we need to. Thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you're going to send us away and no, 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 we're no, not no, done. No, no, no. <laughs> Do you want to discuss that now? So then yeah, that make basically, up. we'd like to give you some direction tonight. Uh, yeah. We're talking about fast track. So, we, uh, again, we haven't heard a, a lot from from each of the occupants. Uh, any, any, anything, Priscilla, that you would want to? No, talk I'm about? sure. I, well, I like I like the looks of option two. Better from the that's road. the one that's on the screen. Yeah, right now. It, it makes right more out. sense symmetrically to me. Um, and I know that they will take care of our program and put things where they should be because they've done so many libraries. Yeah. I, I have total confidence in them. Yeah. So the, the floor plan option, Bill and yeah. Junior. Yeah. I, I have one more question that. <laughs> Um, I don't see in the floor plan, of course, I'm a little old-fashioned being the historian <laughs> and the uh, Aspinac Historical Society here, but um, there's nothing in the floor plan for that I see for uh, any rooms for utility, heating. Uh, do you need, is this the new system where we don't have boiler rooms and things like that? Or, or, uh, we'll, we will take care of all of that. That will all be incorporated. These are just diagrams. Yeah. Just to get overall where, the, where the big pieces are going to be. So, okay. So all the, all the janitor's closets, mechanics, well, electrical yeah. rooms, they will all be in the final design. Okay. Um, can I ask a question? The, the way the sun travels, it, are those two little courtyard areas going to be mostly in the shade all the time? Um, there, there will be a lot of, I mean, this is the two stories building, this is south, so um, as the sun comes up, this will get some, this courtyard faces east, and so it will be shaded as the sun goes back, and this will have a good amount of shade. Yes. So it will be pretty much in the shade all the time because of the the two stories building will be. I just, I, I missed the plan here. I, I'd like to see a separate entrance for the community center simply because, you know, it, it may be uh, used as a the library, as well as town halls, clubs. For instance, you know, Martin Luther King uh, Day, uh, something like that. Um, so, you know, if the, yeah. you know, if the entrance is, if there's one entrance, then it might not be able to be used. That's a great point. Great point. Okay. 
Funny. <laughs> a lot of our meetings might be on like Sundays afternoons. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. It's so an interesting historical society too. Yeah. Our well, idea is that the I'm sorry, the main entrance is open. It's just that every place has the opportunity to shut down. Okay. Yeah. So we do concur and agree that um, there should be a separate entrance for the community center. Um, but that will have its own restrooms. Right. Um, and then the main lobby area, if you will, will be here, and that will have the main okay. toilet the facilities that will be shared for the library. For all. And the but the library could close um, so that everything could be used without the library, mm -hmm. and you could enter that s the historical society from that lobby space as well. So, yeah. 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 And the same will hold true with the second floor. Sure. sure. I will say I like the way the option that option two flows. I think that flows very well, mm -hmm. um, and it it keeps <coughs> meeting in community room spaces very much together, and it keeps the Aspenoff close to the library, which I, I like the way that that flows. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Can, can yeah. Any members, anybody, want any want to weigh in on this? I like this one because of the. Um, specifically for the library because they have a lot more glass and a lot more light and they need that. Yeah. And I do agree with as well. Yeah, there's a motion on the which plan. Well, sure. I think so, but I, 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 would, I know it's not the proper time on the agenda for public comment, but I certainly take comments from anybody else that's here that's not a part of any of those bodies we've talked to. Mm -hmm. Yes? So we're on a 17 Ball Street. Oh, yeah, you're a neighbor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's a nice plan. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what the financing is. Um, my, my general concern would be, uh, you know, safety varies between the private property and the parking area. Just to make sure that the property owners are safe and they don't come crashing through fences, that sort of thing. That would be my only concern. Mm -hmm. yeah. Walking for the people who live on Wall Street. Yeah, don't have any yeah, there are people on the other side of the street that use this area here for parking for the residents. Oh, well, I'm right. sure they'll so use public parking. Yeah, well, I'm just, I know. I think just trying to be helpful to the neighborhood. I think that might be a thought for yeah. the town to actually make that designate parking for them because they don't have a parking place to park. So that would be something that the town could decide at some point. But mm -hmm. definitely a consideration for it. Mm -hmm. And I would like to renew my point about not that making that that area of parking that's wide now less wide mm. and make that other one wider part. I like the idea that I don't have to drive to meetings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a gate on the side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, once we put the safety fence on. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a key. Oh, oh, my gate now. <laughs> I, I think the the key to the site will we'll get another a look at the site again afterwards. Oh, anyway, right. this Absolutely. is just to give you a, an idea of the building. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm interested to see measurements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Else yeah. Here, so. yeah. And this will give us the good exposure if we decide to put solar on the roof because it would be on the back side of the building and facing mm -hmm. towards the south and east. And that's the other thing. I'm, I know you know, the architects and people like that exactly square, you know, but I don't know why we couldn't turn it a little so that it could be exactly the right, in the right position to take advantage of solar. Well, maybe it is. It's not. If we were to move it to it's that extreme, yeah. it, you would be taking up a lot of your your space because yeah. yeah. of the angle. If you see the north oh, arrow down there, uh -huh. um, <laughs> believe me, we like angles. Yeah. But no, um, in this circumstance, yeah. yeah. you would put it basically in the middle of the frame. Yeah. Right. You would just to rotate it a lot, and it's not that it's not opportune. Mm -hmm. um, you're just catching different a, di a different period of the day. The other thing too, if you move it that much, you're not going to have the ability to expand because you're now taking it up. Kit, you know, it's, it'd have to be so far up kitty corner, you could never expand to the ends of it. Now, but the, the, the way the building is sitting, and you've got all this green space out in front, there's not going to be any, any sports activity anymore on this property. Right. There's not going to move to. 
That's why I would like to explore my, my objection to where it is and if it can be moved back further so that there's more green out front so that it's not, you know, the, the, the face of it appears right now to be right in the center of the seven acre field rather than back further. If it could be moved back further, I, my opinion is it should be moved back further so that there's more green area preserved. And then you'll be lacking for parking. parking well, that's what I'm saying. You don't have that big of a parking area there. But what, there what, what's the intent with the green area? What are we going to be doing with the green area? It's going to be walking yeah, space you know, and it's going to be, you know, there, there's the potential of putting a playground on there, but it's going to be pretty much kept which green is open. It's basically it's acceptable to where we have the space now. It is. The, really, the only difference on this is we that the larger chunk. The larger chunk of parking that exists kind of flips over to this side and we would recoup where some of that parking is right now on the big the big chunk of parking, we would recoup some of that and turn that back into grass is what would end up happening. Like where that building is, that building comes down and that would end up we're gonna have sufficient green space with that kind of you know, if you didn't have the upper floor pictured in that right side of that. Yes. It would appear a lot bigger. And it, yeah. it, it, it just throws you off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but well, that's why I asked my first, my first question was, is that the same <coughs> to the, it, that, it in that area? It and is. they said yes. Well, but except that other that couple of floors in there that makes right. it look so smaller. If you, the, if you move the parking lot from the left side to the top, all mm -hmm. you're doing is putting the green space to a different spot. Mm -hmm. they, they're still going to create the same amount of parking. Yeah. It's actually yeah, but it's already in. not green space. <laughs> they, they already, I asked them though, that that's, that's, that parking lot at the top is significantly reduced compared to the parking lot that's there now. So you're gaining more green space at the top. Yeah. So if we take that parking lot from the left side, go to the yeah. top, yeah. shove it over, we'll park on the yeah. top. Work on small. We'll work on it. It's all the same square yeah. footage. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to end up with the same Get the amount of green space. Yeah. 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 My point is you don't have yeah. to do anything with the green space. Yeah. Again. Just having it there yeah. is okay. Yeah, again, that's, we're splitting hairs at this point for that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Talking about the safety things we're talking about. Um, Leave me enough space between mine and that so I can go out and clean my vinyl things. Yeah. One that's mold. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to look ugly. <laughs> we'll use your vinyl fence for a stop. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, can we make a motion? You know, so yes. somebody should be on the committee. The motion is in order to uh, uh, on one of the two options on the building. Yeah, option two. Did you just that motion? He did. Yeah. He's made the motion, yes. I will second that motion. I will second that motion. Okay. Any, any further discussion or discussion? Yeah. All, right. um, all those in favor of uh, recommending uh, option two signify by aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, one more. <laughs> What's your last one? Um, we need, to, just to give us all the armor that we need, um, we'd like to talk about the materiality, materiality of the exterior. Oh, the first yes. scheme oh, was brick and terracotta. It was um, a larger building. The second scheme, we downscaled the building as well as the amount of money we had to spend. So it turned into uh, fiber cement. Um, Hardy plank boards, if you recall, we, and partially brick. We know your preference is towards brick. Mm -hmm. um, we want you to be prepared um, when we're designing this that going back up to a larger building, we'll try to get the whole thing brick. Um, I don't know if you can afford it all brick. Mm -hmm. Can you do a brick option? Yeah. Yes. yes. Can I weigh in on this? If, if we go to a brick, the foundation is going to be significantly more. We're going to have to go to a brick ledge. Brick requires two inches of airspace behind brick. We're talking about six extra inches around the foundation. I'm not 100% sure what you guys are going to require for a foundation wall thickness as it is. I'm wondering about the near brick as an option, where we wouldn't need a brick ledge and use that as a siding opposed to a full six inch brick ledge. It looks just like brick. 
<clears throat> it is from Brett, but it's not full. I, I, we not architects don't know what like it is. <laughs> <laughs> Your architect. It's, it's, it's a slab brick that's put on the. No, they know what it is. I think they have an opinion yeah. about it. That's <laughs> why I don't know what it is. Well, what's your opinion? Uh, we tend to like we tend to like material that is real material as opposed to unreal material. Material that looks like what it's not. No, oh, it is brick. Okay. Yeah. It's the thin it's the thin veneer brick. It, it but but we'll we can take a look at. Like, no, what you're on the Does it not wear well? I mean, yeah. Um, which I think the rich well, thing. I, I just I do this for a living, so I understand the significant cost we're talking about here. Going, so, so I'm just wondering if you have experience with veneer brick, and you're and you're against it. What's your opinion? Well, again, it's it's more of a general opinion of like yeah. a building for uh, for longevity and, and traditional building you know, techniques and materials. So um, we, we just, we tend to like, again, material that is an actual brick. Now, I, we'd, be, we'd love to hear about new materials and we're, we're anxious to use new materials, but we're cautious about, I think that, I think every architect is, you know, I don't know what business you're in, so I don't want to put my foot on it. So lightly. But back in the 80s, there was a whole, Problem with um, an external insulation uh, veneer system, EFIS, yeah. drive it, that proved that everybody thought it was going to be a great material because it looked like stucco and you could carve it to look like stone. And, and then there were some huge problems with water infiltration and mold and that sort of stuff. So we tend to go towards driving. This is a driver. But, yeah. I, I, that, was my, just one, that was just one yeah. example. Now, so you can certainly look at, at, at uh, prefabricated panels um, uh, uh, that, that look like brick, and, and we'd love to hear uh, from you after the meeting if you've got some. Well, I don't specifically work with brick. I'm, I'm a concrete, you know, but concrete is what I do, and I understand what the brick ledge requires, and yep. I know this is going to go right. I, I think in this circumstance, um, the the brick, the veneer, and real brick, they both require the airspace. They both require the veneer insulation. Require With the updated building codes, um, we're now in. Well, Connecticut likes to be loud. Um, yeah. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Massachusetts, I know, is on 2015, and they're getting really tight. So, you do need the insulation on the exterior of your building. And to go from the veneer to the real material is not a huge dimensional change um, or difference. Like, like Alma said, why don't we do these as options? Right. So, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to like go down the rabbit hole. No, no, we're, we're, it's all good. We've been going down the rabbit hole for a long time. So it's quite good. That's why you're on a committee. <laughs> any, any more questions now? No, that was it. You're good. <laughs> Slow through. So sure, you don't ask anything. The slope to roofs is a requirement. We understand. Um, it was really the exterior um, and what the materials options would be that you prefer. I, we understand that there's an economy. <laughs> we understand that there's always a budget issue. So we would definitely give you options. Um, yeah. there, there we can I'd like to talk about furniture. I don't know if it's sure. the right time, but we have a lot of usable furniture in this town hall, and we have a lot of accumulated furniture that's stored at the armory that came from high school. Some of it is, some of it's pretty good. Oh, was there. No, no, it's, no, it's really not that great. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that while there are some usable pieces, like my desk is perfectly usable, that was yep. perfectly fine, and I would, you know, want to take that to where mm -hmm. whatever other building because it's perfectly fine. Most of the furniture and and desks and whatnot that are in here in the town hall have long passed their expiration date. Well, what? And the stuff that's at the armory isn't that much farther. Libraries, a lot of original 1955. Right. 
My but it's retro. But retro. retro. It's retro. Yeah. It's I don't know. What, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do avoid here is that if we are going and bonding, or bonding and paying for over uh, many years for something that only will live for the time that it's that we are bonding it for. So whether we take some of this money that we have to put towards the project and we buy the fixtures, the furniture, I just can't see you know, mortgaging to pay for furniture that won't even be in existence by the time we're paying. It's still paying off. And that's that's mm -hmm. the reason I bought it. Mm -hmm. well, when we uh, when we when we prepare the total project cost, yeah. um, there you've seen there's a line item in there for furniture, and it's based upon uh, recent projects that we've done because we, <coughs> we, we can specify the furniture and, and we assist municipalities in, in, in purchasing the furniture. So we've got a pretty good database on how much it costs. Once you see that line item, that's something that the committee can decide to to modify mm -hmm. if they want. You know, if it's if it's uh, five hundred thousand dollars for furniture, if you want to say we will commit to reusing. Two hundred thousand dollars for the furniture. Then it's really just a change in that particular line item. Mm -hmm. With um, some things like the display cases for the things for the historical society, would that be possibly like a, a built-in type of thing? I think so. I mean, I think that that there's a there's a wonderful opportunity for the historical society as being part of the building for the display cases to be built in so that people could be in the lobby and walk mm -hmm. through a display case into mm -hmm. the exhibit space. Mm -hmm. And they would change things out. Right. They're, they're there might be an opportunity with the, with the historical society on this corner. Now the way that this diagram is, and again, things could change, um, the town hall overhangs that corner. So there's the, this, it would shade the historical society. So. You wouldn't have direct sunlight in there, so you wouldn't have to worry too much about that. But you could have windows that are built as display cases, so that even from the outside, people could see some of the artifacts that are in the historical society. Mm -hmm. I think it puts a little bit of pressure on the historical society <laughs> to keep, keep things neat and pretty and open <laughs> and lit. Yeah, <laughs> because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a real concern, frankly, with with this diagram, <coughs> the historical society is a is a wonderful prominent location, and you don't want that to be a dark corner mm -hmm. on School Street all the time. So right. I realize that they're not open all the time now, mm -hmm. but just want everybody in this particular diagram. <laughs> but, then, but, then it, but then it'll be dark if people drive around. Yep, they said uh, they're going to be building a new. Complex. I am of the opinion I don't want to put vintage furnishings into a new building. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not antique, it's junk. <laughs> no, Why are we saving it then? We're so waiting for an auction. No, it's not necessarily yeah. that we're saving it, it's that that's what we're using. Yeah. I mean, we. The the oh, there's some that are stored in the armory, but they're slowly yeah. the they put it in the armory because they didn't want yeah. it. Right. I mean, yeah. that's slowly that's being that's discarded that's over time. Um, and then, you know, we just the rest of the stuff is being actively used and yeah. just not. Replaced. We're going to talk about the armory on the next so it, it's, it's, a, it's a line item in the project budget that we can examine at that particular point. And so we, very often that's done in building projects where they might have some fundraising or uh, an opportunity to, to pay for it in a different <coughs> When would you like to talk to us again? At your February meeting. <laughs> okay. The regular February meeting. We need meeting. a month to... The 22nd of February yeah. is fine. With you. And then if you have a problem, we'll have the call you sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And, and if I may, with regards to the with regards to the furnishings and coming up with the cost, really what our goal is is to come up with the total cost of the project. Financing it is a separate conversation, mm -hmm. right? So we may not necessarily be borrowing for all of that cost. Correct. Right? So but we want to make sure that we put out what that total cost is, regardless of how it's necessarily going to be funded. But that the total cost 
including furnishings. Everything is out there. Maybe we come up with alternate ways of financing it. Yeah. But we need to have that total cost. And I would, I would just caution against removing things like furniture from the total mm -hmm. cost on the assumption that we're going to finance it in a different way because that's a financing conversation and not necessarily a total cost conversation. No, it's not a cost, it's not a conversation this board should have. I mean, it, we, we need the numbers to get it to the people who are going to make those decisions. Exactly. We, we shouldn't be making that decision here. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. I would, uh, I would suggest a, a five minute recess so they, they can break down. Somebody may want to make a motion for it. Don't move. All in favor? We'll be back at 8 <laughs> 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 <laugh